The nightmare tenant, that one that doesn't pay, trashes the house, it is the landlord's worst fear. How do you avoid it? It's actually quite simple. You need a process. And today we're going to break down that process. We're going to demystify it and explain exactly how you can get the perfect tenant, not the nightmare tenant. Let's get into it. Hello, I'm Jess. I'm Adam. I'm Craig. We are ForTheLandlords.com. We're a letting agent. We're also the UK's number one property sourcer. But today we're going to talk to you about the nightmare tenant, uh, the one that doesn't pay the rent, trashes the house. How do you avoid them? There is, there is actually a series of answers. We have a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from my point of view as a landlord, I've had my share, fair share of uh, bad tenants. I get mercifully few n now. Um, in fact, I had one recently. I'm going to be able to talk about some experience, but it's the first one for a long time, yeah. like maybe three years or so. Um, and I was very confident all the way through that process that you guys were going to handle it in, I know the process. So I'll chip in with my yeah. um, thoughts. Cool. Uh, okay. Craig's the expert. You can answer the questions. So we've got questions. a tenant yeah. screening process. So um, what is tenant screening? So tenant screening is basically referencing. So it's always recommended that you always reference a tenant. Um, never just let somebody move in without doing that. And what I mean by referencing, it's not just getting a landlord reference or an employment reference, it's actually doing a credit check. So it's checking things like bankruptcy orders, yeah. CCJs, because that's vital, because that instantly gives you a picture of how that tenant... Yeah, there's companies that do this, yeah. referencing companies. Totally. Yeah. We use there's a very good one. There's tons of companies that do it out there. Yeah. Um, it's not expensive either. No, no it's not. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for what it costs, it's 100% needed. And, and we, we would see landlords skipping that. I've seen mm -hmm. agents that skip. I've seen agents that say we do um, custom and in-house referencing. I've seen landlords complain that the tenant failed referencing. Well, it's good, isn't it? Because you've caught it. You've, caught it. you've nipped it in the bud. Yes, it's unfortunate. And yeah. the tenant would have probably lied on the viewing, hence mm -hmm. why they failed referencing. Because we wouldn't bother putting them through if they'd have mm -hmm. said something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And, a, and a lot of agents do, like you said, do their own in-house yeah. referencing. But all that means is just they'll just do an employment check. Google, and just Facebook. And a previous landlord. That yeah. is it. Yeah. So be very careful. Yeah. Our referencing paperwork, um, I've looked at many, many of them, and you, know, you scroll down and you get a really nice breakdown of who they are, whether they you know, check their, their ID, their actually mm -hmm. identity, their right to rent. Um, right, that's an important thing. Have they got the right to rent in the UK? If they're a UK citizen, they almost certainly have. But if they're not, then mm. check the, the visa documents and diarise to recheck them later. Yeah. I, know, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and um, the, the, for me, the acid test of a referencing paperwork is can you get insurance against it? Mm. Yeah. So if you do a Facebook Google reference and call up the last landlord, which lots of landlords and some letting agencies do, and they think that, you know, You'd like to do that as well, but you can't go to an insurance company and say, give me rent and legal protection right. based on that nice conversation, fluffy True. bit that I've just had. Right. You need to have credit score searched, um, you know, all, all those searches that that kind of company can do in the background, <clears throat> credit rating, bankruptcy, CCJs. But it's also looking, because what a lot of referencing companies do, they'll just take, for example, the tenant's annual salary and they'll just base the rent on that alone, That's a very they don't take point. into account if the tenant's got five cars on finance. Yes. You know, um, they're helping their friend pay their rent or they're paying yeah. their mum and dad's mortgage. Our referencing company look at all of looks Yeah, all that's a things. really important point actually because that, that's um, recent. In the last year and a bit, they've started to do that. So instead of doing... So we do an affordability, affordability check, check yeah. as part of the screen. Which is different to a income check. Yeah. You know, we have got some applicants have got good income but fail because they've got loads of loans and outgoings mm. and actually the money they've got left over isn't enough to afford the rent. Yeah. Whereas somebody on lesser mm. income with less outgoings have got more disposable income or income uh, free in order to be able to afford the rent. So exactly. the aff affordability is better than income. Mm. Right. So and you have to be checking. careful with, with uh, rent and legal because they look at that as well and if yes. that's not been checked properly, yeah. avoid. That, actually really good important. Um, so when we say um, you get the insurance. There are our referencing company do the insurance. Yep. But as a landlord out there, you might be listening to this thinking, I can do my own referencing and get insurance. If they're two different companies, the insurance company can take your money. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're insured. Yep. But, when it, it. but then two years later, when you come to claim on it, they check all the paperwork. You'd like to have thought they'd have checked it two years ago, but it's not in their interest to. Mm. And oops, you're not, you, you haven't claimed it. 
It could be something you did right at the beginning, something in the middle. So having that continuity of um, you know, referencing all the checks you need to do, you need to do the right direction, you need to do inspections as well, don't you? Those kind of things keeps your, um, uh, your, your initial reference valid and your rent and legal valid. So, um, go on, should we move on? That? Yeah, so yeah. Then the next um, question um, we get asked a lot is, what is the ideal tenant profile? Mm. There isn't one. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, that's an interesting, yeah. I yeah. would agree, yeah. 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 There, just, there just isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there used to be, mm -hmm. but now any tenant is ideal. Um, example, be open to housing benefit. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could do a full reference on a, on a tenant that's employed. They, lose they, their they could lose their job the day they move in. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing yeah. you can yep. do about it. Yep. There's all these things you have to think about, and housing <coughs> benefit in particular, it's unlikely that that's going to stop. And now referencing companies take housing benefit exactly the same as if the tenant was employed. Mm -hmm. They take it as guaranteed income. Yep. We don't... We know how many of our tenants started off on housing benefit. It's actually not very many at all. Mm. Uh, do we still ask for guarantors on them? If not, no, mm. they're not there. They still have to go through an affordability check. They have to go through an affordability check. check. I know the guarantor, through... There's been changes about yeah. you can't discriminate, etc., yeah. etc. But there's quite a lot of um, tenants with a housing benefit that might apply for a house and they will fail the affordability check, not because they're on benefit. Exactly. Because of the, yeah. It's taken exactly the same as employed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's classed as guaranteed income now. So you, you don't have to ask the tenants for a guarantor. Is it slightly more guaranteed than the job? Housing benefit, as long as you stay eligible Possibly. for it, well, you keep getting mm. your housing benefit. Yeah, um, and it's, there's an unfair stigma attached mm. to a housing benefit tenant that they're exactly, a, yeah. not a good tenant, they won't look after your house, or that, yeah. and that's not, it's, just it's unfair not and it's not true. It's what? simply not true. Yeah. And also, um, just rent and legal, they change their processes as well now, where you can still get a policy On that, yeah. with a housing benefit yeah. tenant. I was gonna say, I don't know if we would be able yeah. to say how many of our tenants are on universal credit or housing benefit because they start off not on that. Maybe they lose the job or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or um, get into it some other way, but then they start receiving they benefits. Could get, they could be and they, because as long as they, they keep paying their rent, they then had, they had a, an injury or something. Yeah, and exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that happens and we, you wouldn't know. I suppose you'd you pick yeah, it up at the next inspection, course, maybe, yeah. but if they don't tell you, yeah. they're just at home and they're paying their rent, yeah. there's the no I, way you'd ever the know. The ideal tenant profile is just a uh, person, a family, or someone who will live look in the after, house, look after, after yeah. pay their rent on time, yeah? yeah. yeah. And that's nearly yeah. every single tenant. Mm -hmm. you, I'm, I'm, you can definitely tell, <clears throat> and totally, not, it's, it's, it's the soft stuff, when, um, uh, before the referencing process, when we're booking um, applicants into a viewing, if you are straightforward in that process, turn up on time, um, fill no, in the you've like quickly. written a nice little thing. So, hello, I was just um, yeah. hoping to book a viewing yeah. for this house. Is it still available, please? That kind of thing. Versus yeah. the, my favourite one I ever saw was, is this prop still av? <laughs> yeah. No. no. No, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> maybe a bit, a bit uh, judgmental because yeah, anybody but, the age of, you know, under the age of 25 might have written it like that, but you can definitely I get think, a feel yeah. about how they conduct themselves during that process, mm, the, totally. the first bit of it. Mm. Um, and then as long as they've passed their referencing, and the other, the other part of it is, I mean, we're probably going to come on to that. In fact, we are. We're going to talk about the essential checks. And let's talk about that a bit more because it's not just... Yeah. Well, let's um, move on to that. Yeah, the essential move on to that, checks. Yeah. So, what, so, are, what are they? So, I, I think... Go on. Go on, I'm, I'm taking over. I mean, that's unlike me. <clears throat> essential checks, they're basically... It, it's not just employment reference. Mm. It's not just previous landlord reference. It's like we touched on earlier. It's looking at the tenant's entire um, kind of financial record. So it's not looking about what they just earn in terms of money coming in, it's what they're paying out. Um, and that, well for us in particular, that's the most important thing that we look at mm -hmm. more than anything else. Um, even things like open banking, which we insist now. And basically what that allows our referencing company to do is literally just dive the into tenants' thing. financial records yeah. within seconds. Yeah. And then you immediately get a profile built in terms of whether that tenant can easily afford that rent. Yeah. So open banking goes just every in. single bit of their uh, financial data on their bank account. It tells mm. them what they're spending, where, builds up that picture. It's yeah. quick. So you know, one, mm. of the, one of the disadvantages of having empty properties, you've got a void, you don't want that, avoid the void. Um, if we can get through to the process, that, get through the bit of the process that says, can you afford it? Can we move them in as quick as possible? If it's a no, because it might be, mm. you can start again without having lost three weeks. You've exactly. lost a day or two. So open banking is really good for that. Yeah. I was going to say, when, when we talk about essential checks, going further forward, further upstream, that you know, how do they conduct themselves, then through the referencing, talk a little bit about 
the three month check because I think that's important as well. The tenant's in there by now, mm -hmm. but we're talking about avoiding a nightmare tenant. Yeah. And I think there's definitely something that we do, you do, that's, un I won't say it's, un it's unusual. I mean, other people will surely do it, I know, but we do a three month check with lots, lots of agents do. But you pick up on stuff there as well. And so that avoids, yeah. Because the thing is, inspections, so property inspections, we all know what they are. But a lot of landlords don't understand just how important they are. So it, it's not like you just get out of your car and, and you have a chat with the tenant for 10 minutes and leave. Some do. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do a bit it, more. It literally ties back to that tenant referencing and it all comes down to right to rent checks, which is a fairly new thing. Um, but when I say no, it's been around a while now. But, yeah, about two, um, four years? It's, yeah, five it, years. It's, it's very in depth and the inspections link directly to that. So it always comes back to the referencing. For example, um, to satisfy right to rent, you have to make sure there's no more authorised occupiers. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a yeah. big one. Yeah, good point. So you're not just going to look at the property, you're actually looking for key signs. And one of the things I always look for, and, I've, and this has never changed, is toothbrushes. So, yeah, yeah. If you've got one tenant in the property and you walk in the bathroom and there's seven toothbrushes yeah. on the sink, it's a big indicator. Shoe, shoes on the shoe rack, coats on the coat rack, how many yeah. people you know, extra beds in the floor. Mm. Now. As a landlord, some some of you might be thinking, we yeah, found understand what, oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we know what right, maybe you know what right to rent is, you know how important it is, but if you don't, it it's is it ten, ten thousand pounds. Mm. Ten it's just recently gone up. It's recently four. gone up. Yeah. So it, this is and, and you can oh, why am I the border control? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Tough you are, this is this is matter. the rules. Um if you don't identify that as a landlord and then flag it up. All you've got to do is send an email to border control, I think, is mm. it? Yeah. Um special mm. email address, you've got to flag it up. If you don't it's ten thousand pounds per occupant. Mm. So, and and it's no good saying, "Oh, I didn't do the inspections." Well, you should have done the inspections. Mm. That is actually your responsibility to do that. So, talking yeah. about avoiding the nightmare situations, it's not just well, the right house on the right street, prepared to the right area, is going to attract the right type of tenant. Choose them, but it's then how you deal with them thereafter exactly. as well. Mm. And it's not just right to rent. It's also back to housing benefit. If there's um, yeah. more than one tenant living in the property, there's then they're not eligible anymore. anymore. Yeah. There's yeah. clawback. There's clawback. You know, there's, there's all these things you have to consider and you have to be aware of because yeah. it can happen. Yeah, explain that. So, uh, single mum, yeah. a couple of kids, housing benefit based on that, but the boyfriend moves in. Exactly. Or well, the kids have moved out or live with their dad or something, it can change. Yeah. It, it yeah. could be the partners living there or multiple yeah. people are living there, but the housing benefit office believe just one tenant's living there. Mm -hmm. mm. They potentially they, they... do a clawback of rent from day one. From day one, yeah. 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 So again, the inspection is vital, so, and any end ties back to the reference. Essential checks. Mm. Um, I think that there's one other thing we could talk about here, and, and when you want a good tenant, when you classify a good tenant, everyone wants a good tenant. Um, the, th the two things you'd want is somebody who looks after the house and pays on time. Now, in, when we do the referencing, you get somebody that hopefully is going to do those both two things, and we just talked about how um, a inspection is going to keep them looking after the house well, and they will. Mm -hmm. you, you can you can go into a house that, um, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm convinced. I wouldn't say you, it will keep. Most tenants would look after it anyway. If you spotted something, I'm convinced yeah. that you can keep knocking them back Maybe. into line. And if you didn't, it would perhaps. Yeah. Can you? I'm just reminding you, it's your yeah. responsibility to cut the grass. I mean, we example, have had to explain to a lot of tenants things about, you know, ventilating, opening yeah. windows. Yes. Maybe you know. Um, the, the, the right checks keep on line. Yeah, That's but the, and I, I think it goes hand in hand with providing a really good house in the first place. Correct. You know, you, the, the nightmare scenarios that get spoken about, ten, you'll tend to find the house was a bit bad to, to begin with. with. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, people look after nice things, it's just oh, human yeah, it's nature. Just is, yeah. So you provide a really nice, decent and safe home, you really, really, really high chance it will be looked after. I'm convinced you well. can keep things on track. Yeah, definitely. Well. But if we're talking about the two bits, looking after the house and getting the money in, I think one of the things that we do well, you do well, is if a tenant doesn't pay the rent, and it, ha it happens, and that, that's something that can develop into the nightmare tenant not mm. paying massive arrears, <clears throat> but we've got a really good process for yeah. keeping mm. um, things tight there as well. And, totally. you know, to explain it and then... It's, well, well, when tenants fall into arrears, the first thing that I suppose is, is a normal reaction is to panic. We, 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 we never panic, and, and in particular our accounts team, we focus on speaking to the tenant and working with them. That's the number one thing. We don't jump in heavy-handed. No. You know, Consistent. We, we, we listen to the tenants, we listen to their problems, 
and we try and work with them. You know, we've, we've had tenants even still with us now that have been into been in arrears. Mm. You know, last year, year before, they're still tenants still because we worked with them. No, never and sometimes that. that is the best way. Obviously, that's not going to work every time. Um, sure. But that is the number one thing that mm. we do. But if that doesn't work, we have a set system that we follow without fail. We, we never kind of go off, off piece with it. it. It's that way every way. Yep. Um, yeah, a little bit off piece because we're trying to talk about mm. nightmare tents, but that, I think that's that's important. Mm. Keeping them on track further down the line, not yeah. just the screening, it's all those <coughs> regular checks ongoing forever. Because yeah. you know the tenant that's been in there for five years that doesn't pay their rent, want something's if they've been fine for five years and they didn't pay their rent, something's, something's gone happened, wrong, yeah. and you exactly. should be able to bring it back because they're not a bad person. Totally. They've probably just lost their job or in between jobs. Talk about it. And but they're keeping fine. that. Yep. Um, kind of trust between them and us, they're more likely to talk to you as well. Correct. And it's the same with the landlord. If you alienate your tenant, it's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. You don't want to make them afraid. Yeah. You want them to still, talk to you. Still stuck in, yeah. yeah. Moving on? Yeah. We've yeah. got well, another couple of points on there before one, we wrap up. We've got two more points. I think the next one really is probably a video in itself. So I don't think we need to go into too much detail. Yeah, but... Yeah. Um, we do need to touch on it, eviction section 21 notice, etc. Avoiding the nightmare tenant. Yeah. Um, there are times when the best way is to Right, we may need to take decisive action. So what do we do? The escape clause, what, what we got? So sometimes it's unavoidable and sometimes it has to happen. So there, there are occasions where you are going to have to serve a notice on your tenant. Mm. Um, and sometimes it, it works, the tenants pay, yes. if it's a related. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes you, know, you just need to give that bit of you know, strong nudge. Um, to be honest, we don't have to do it that often. Um, usually we try and, well, or we do, resolve things, but it happens. And usually when that notice is served, you do them nine times out of 10 to see results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, from landlord's point of view, don't be scared of serving it. Yeah. You'll have your property manager saying, I think we should serve notice. At that point you think, um, I'm gonna alienate my tenant, um, they're not gonna pay, well, and, it's gonna, gonna and, it, and it's gonna not, not gonna leave, and it's gonna cost me a load of money. Yeah. Um, Cause it will cost you, it will. You, you, the, it's, do you know what, budget 2,000 pounds, it'll probably be a little bit less, but budget 2,000 pounds, I think my last one was actually 1,400 quid. Yeah. It's gone up, I used to say it was 1,000 pounds, it's about 1,400 quid. Mm. Uh, and that's for all the court letters, the bailiff, um, your barrister, the lot. So it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not like 10,000 pounds, like having a, yeah. a, a solicitor's solicitor, like mm. a legal fee. It's, it's a reasonably mm. succinct thing. It's a process that goes through. You hear a lot in the, uh, the news about it being a slow, you know, laborious and fiddly process that you can get knocked back on, which is true if you approach it wrong. But if you get the professionals, and like I say, 1,400 quid for me, budget two, 1,000 pounds, because you might need a couple of barristers, a um, couple of sessions, more than one session, then it's actually quite straightforward, isn't it? It, it, does, is. it just works. The, the times it gets thrown out, is when it's wrong. It's when the paperwork's been if done wrong. If the paperwork's wrong. right and you've done everything as you should have, then, how, many you how, many times you ever, how many times have you ever had it chucked out, Craig? No. Out of, yeah, no. <laughs> I knew the answer to that. He's no. very, very proud of that. Never had one knock back at court. Never, ever, ever. ever. And um, <clears throat> yeah, now. <clears throat> Which leads me to the next point, yeah, obviously, quite quite nicely. Have. Yeah, good. So the next point is, uh, it's all related to this, is, you know, what are the main benefits of having a pro property manager or a letting agent? I mean, that's one of them. Yeah. Well, for me, it's Go experience, on. track record, mm. it's knowledge, it's... Perfect paperwork. All those things, yeah. yeah. Everything done without fail. Mm. You know, we, we know what we're doing. Um, we, ne we never skip a step. We know exactly what needs to be done in what order. And everything is there. So yeah. if it does ever get to that unfortunate, you know, point where you may are, maybe are in court with a section twenty one, it'll fly through. Yeah. So I've done it both ways. I, I didn't used to have Craig, and now I do. I couldn't do it without you. But um, yeah, it, as a landlord, you bought some houses. You have probably got a day job that's quite involved. Man, maybe maybe not. That's an assumption. But you definitely more landlords that I meet think they can do it. I did. I thought, oh, I can do it. Renting mm. a house out is easy. That's the thing that a landlord will think. And of course, it actually is easy. When I was doing it, I could rent a house out dead quick. Hello, how you doing? You got 500 quid in your pocket? Right off you go, get you in. It's dead easy, they're in, they're a tenant straight away. But Jesus, did I have some problems, mm. eh? Yeah. And um, having a letting agent, mm. it, actually, right at the beginning, having a property manager felt frustrating as a landlord that was quite relaxed and easy and would chuck that tenant in with cash. Because... Goodness me, you're taking three days to rent my house. <laughs> What's all this yeah. fuss you're making with the paperwork? Mm. You know. Um, and sometimes you're told no. Som landlord. Sometimes it's like, what do you mean you've got to re-rent it? Oh, yeah. oh, I've got a void, you know. I need to get this thing full. Um, but no, uh, having 
somebody with the, the knowledge, mm. the time, because you know the reason I was kicking them in really quickly is because I had to go back to work. I didn't have yeah. the time to think about going, you know. Uh, and then when it does go wrong, or, or could potentially go wrong, you can snap it into shape quickly, and actually it probably won't go wrong. Mm. The amount of tenants that I know I used to have a long, long time ago, when they went into a little bit of arrears, it got worse because I didn't say anything about it because I didn't notice for two weeks. I put one tenant in, I remember, and I forgot to chase it. I forgot to put it on the system. Never chased him for his rent for about six months. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do to a tenant? You haven't been paying your tenant rent for six months. Yeah. He thinks I'm an idiot. So oh, and that's a very extreme. It shows that I'm an, yeah. an, an idiot, of course. But you know, it, if one of our tenants doesn't pay rent for a day, they get a phone call. Yeah. One yeah. one half day later, the ten o'clock the next morning, when it hasn't cleared in the bank. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. Okay. We're going to end. Yeah. We've, we've, we've finished the uh, the video. You are now a tenant referencing pro. Um, got any questions? Leave the comments wherever you like. Email in. Uh, we'd like to do more videos answering your specific questions. So be in touch if you've got any. Yeah. Got anything else to say, Adam? Yeah. If you uh, would like to book a call with me to you know talk about this topic or anything else property related, feel free to follow the link in the bio. Um, like the video. Share it. Subscribe really helps um, us if you could like it stuff. right now just take a second mm. now and then the bell do it now cheers thank you very much cheers bye